Hi guys, it's Miss Carmen. To all of my students who are watching this at home, I miss you very much, and I decided to put together some video lessons so that we could be together, even though right now we're apart, and so we could keep you exploring and creating and learning about art while we're all adjusting to these new ways. If you're not a former student of mine, welcome. I'm sorry that I couldn't have met you before this, but here we are now, and let's get started. Today, I'm gonna to be doing a project inspired by the American modernist painter, Georgia O'Keeffe. Georgia O'Keeffe is really well known for her paintings of flowers and also desert landscapes. And I've chosen a desert landscape so that we can focus on warm and cool colors and also on foreground, middle ground, and background to give some depth to our landscapes. I'm going to be using paper and oil pastels, but if you don't have oil pastels at home, you can use watercolors, colored pencils, or even crayons. Um, a brief note, I have a bit of a southern accent, so I occasionally say oil pastels instead of oil pastels. I'm going to do my best to leave my southern accent out of it and say oil pastels the proper way. The painting I'm going to be using for a reference today is called Black Mesa Landscape, and I'm going to try to tell you a little bit more about Georgia O'Keeffe and her life while we work. Okay, let's grab our stuff and get started. I'm going to flip the camera around. Okay, I'm about ready to get started. I've got my reference picture right here. Um, I'm just going to use this for inspiration. I do want to let you know I have cats, and if I shut the door, they will cry at the door the entire time. So. Hopefully they'll leave us alone and I won't have to deal with them because the door is open <laughs> and I love them, but I need a break. Okay. I'm going to start by using a pencil to sketch. You don't have to do this. You can dive right in with your oil pastel or crayon if you feel confident, but I wanted to talk a little bit about what I'm doing while I'm doing it. So I thought I would use the oil pastels or the pencil to sketch it out first. Now, always, draw light until it's right. I'm going to be drawing a little darker, but that's because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing on the camera. So the first thing I'm going to do, I noticed in this reference, as you can see, it looks like a bit of space. This looks closer to us than this. This looks further away in the distance. So we have this nice green of the trees in the foreground. The front right here, this is the foreground. The middle distance is the midground, and then this would be the background. All this back here, it just, it looks like it goes back into space. It gives some depth to the painting. And we're going to work on doing that. Now, the trees, I'm going to just start by kind of sketching out a basic shape. I'm not doing anything too detailed. I'm just giving myself a map of where I want them to go. I'm not sure if you can see right now. I don't have a tripod officially, but I'm going to get one. But until now, I'm just doing my best. Okay. So this is where I want my trees to go. Now I'm going to look at this top of this mountain range here. And I'm going to start putting in some of my mid-ground. I'm going not quite halfway up the paper. I'll probably get halfway up the paper with this peak. I'm just sketching out the top. I'm going to add a few little hills back here. And I'm going to start adding bigger mountains in the back. Now we don't, ours doesn't have to look exactly like the reference. That's not the point. The reference is just a guide to try on a new style and see if we like it and learn about George's work while we hone our skill. So I'm just going to start with this because I'm going to be dividing it further. So I think this is sufficient for now. Okay. So Georgia O'Keeffe is really known for her lines, her color and composition. So the lines you can see here, and then the colors, we have these warm colors, 
and then the cool colors in the back. The warm colors feel closer to us and the cool colors in the back, they make it feel a little more in the distance. She also simplifies these big shapes. If you've ever seen a mountain, you know that it's really broken down into smaller shapes than this, but she simplifies these big shapes and that's a part of her style that I love. So we're gonna try to do that too. Okay, so I've got my basic guide right here. I'm going to start by going in with, I'm gonna take a couple of different greens. If you're using watercolor, I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my, my lightest colors first. If you're using watercolor, you can do the same. Just kind of go in with a light wash. And again, I'm not, I'm not focused on making it perfect right now because I am going to be adding to it and going back and reworking it. This is just basic coloring in. So I'm probably gonna speed some of this up so that we have room for the video. Okay, so I have a lot of my lights in here. You can see I still have white spaces. That's fine, I'm gonna go back and fill them in later. But right now I want to start with um, breaking down some of the pieces of my mountain range. I am going to choose a really light color. I'm choosing like almost a peach color. I'm gonna choose an oil pastel and a peach color. You can use a very light um, almost white yellow or orange if you'd like and I'm just going to outline the top of my mountain range where I think the sun would be hitting now you can see my lines I'm not too concerned about that the lines are to show you where to go and hopefully I can cover them up in a bit and again I'm getting outside the lines here a little bit but I'll be fixing that in a little while. The goal is not to be perfect from start to end. The goal is to feel our way through and explore. We can correct mistakes. It's a painting, not a photograph. If we wanted a photograph, we'd just take a photo. So I'm just gonna get the top of the mountain range here where I know the light's gonna be hitting in some places. Now I'm going to go in with a darker orange. If you're using crayon, I would try to find a darker orange crayon. If you are using watercolors, I would go in with, I'm going to actually go in with my darkest. So I'm going to use a burnt sienna, but I'm going to go in with an almost brown orange. If you're using watercolor, you can mix a little bit of brown and orange to get this kind of burnt sienna, but I'm just going to start breaking this mountain range into shapes. And I'm not, I'm not going to copy O'Keeffe's shapes. I'm just going to make my own because again, this is our style that we're exploring here. So I'm just breaking this down into smaller shapes and again, I'm going to speed this up so that we have more room in the video. Okay, now that I have these darker shapes in, I'm gonna go ahead and start expanding a little bit, just making them a little bit bigger. If you have watercolor, just thicken the lines a little. Some will be thick, some will be thin. The lines, try not to keep the lines the same thickness all the way down. They might be thin in some areas and then get thicker in the middle and then thin out again. And we'll blend these later. I think they'll look nice. Okay, so I have these mostly filled in the way I like them. Um, I might go back and add a few details later, 
But for now, I'm going to go in with a lighter orange, just a little lighter than I had, and go on the edges of this. I'm just right here on the edges of the darker orange that I have, kind of going over it and blending it together. If you're using watercolor, you can just put it right next to this line and just let it blend out a little bit. I'm just coloring on the outside edges of these lines. Okay, so I have this here, and again, I still have some white spots. I'm going to go back and blend that later. But now I'm going to use an even lighter orange. If you're using watercolor, whatever color you're using, you can take yellow or just um, thin it down with water. So I'm going to start filling in these center pieces here. This is where the light is going to be hitting. Okay, now I'm using watercolor paper, so I'm having a bit of trouble blending some of these white spots out. I'm going to use a Q-tip. If you're using watercolor, you probably don't need to do anything. I'm sure it's blended well. If you're using oil pastels, you might not be having this problem, but I, I can't get to the store right now, so I have to work with what I have. So I'm going to use a Q-tip and just start blending these white spots in and smudging these colors together. Just a regular Q-tip. So Georgia O'Keeffe was born November 15th, 1987. She died March 6th, 1986. And even when she was a young girl, she knew she wanted to be an artist. I think she was, some, some sources I've read say about 10 years old. Some people say 12 years old. But she knew when she was a young girl she wanted to be an artist. And she worked really hard to make that dream come true. When she graduated high school, she went to school for art. And in the 1900s, it was not easy for a woman to become an artist. They weren't always taken seriously, but she pushed through. And after um, she dropped some work off with the gallery owner and he showed it without, without her permission, they, they became really well-known and, and they were a hit. So she became um, a well-known influential artist and she's one of the most influential women in the arts today. Okay, you can see I'm just blending these some. It looks so much nicer. So I'm going to speed this up at this point so that you don't have to watch me blend all day. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to start moving on to these mountains in the background. I'm going to tell you right now, just in case you jump ahead, if you're going to use a Q-tip to blend, do not use the Q-tip for the orange to, bend, to blend the blue mountains. If you do, it's going to turn a brown. It, they're complementary colors, so we don't want to do that. So all of our warm colors down here, we have those ready to go. We have cool, warm, and then kind of neutrals and then cool again. I'm going to go ahead. If you want to make these light yellow or orange, you're welcome to. I'm just kind of picking what I'm going to use this little, I think I'm going to do this light peach. And I'm going to add a few more back here.
Okay, so now I'm going to move on to these dark blue mountains in the background. You can see it's a little different. They're a little darker blue up top, and they're a little lighter down here. And I think that's because these mountains are supposed to be in shadow. And the ones in the very back, the very back background, they're gonna be lighter than the mountains right here in the middle. If we make them lighter, they'll look a little further in the distance. So I'm going to take my darkest, darkest blue. In fact, I may use almost a black. Let me see what I have. Or maybe I'll use a dark blue and then put black on top of it. But I'm gonna go ahead and start tracing out. And yours doesn't have to look just like mine. Your shapes don't have to be like mine. If they don't look just like mine, that's fine. This is not, this is just a video to show basic steps. And I'm sure you'll notice that I mess up many times as I'm working and uh, I don't sweat it. Messing up is part of the process. And if you focus on it being perfect from start to finish, you're just gonna drive yourself crazy. So let's focus on just having a good time while we draw. It takes a lot of practice to be an artist. I was not very good at drawing and painting when I was younger, but I think that's mostly because I didn't realize it took practice. <laughs> I just wanted to be good at it and I thought you were either good at it or you weren't, which is not true. You have to practice. It can be learned. I'm just filling in some dark spots here. The pretty dark blue. Again, I'm gonna leave a little bit of room. I want it to be kind of light on the top of this mountain because I want it to look like there's like snow on it. But that's just my personal choice. You can do what you want. And I'm gonna speed this up again. And hopefully you can see. Okay, now I'm gonna take a much lighter blue, if I can find one. Actually, I'm gonna go in with like a middle, middle blue. No, that's too dark. I'm gonna try a lighter blue. Sometimes you have to try a few things out before you get where you want to be. Um, I'm going to go on with this blue. And again, I'm going to fill in here. Leave it, I'm going to leave it kind of open in the middle on some of these. Just fill in the... If you're using watercolor, again, you're just going in with your lighter blue. With crayon, same, just going with the lighter blue. It might be a little harder to blend with crayon, but we're learning and you can adapt to make it look like your own. It doesn't have to look just like mine. It would be boring if all art looked the same. We wouldn't have Picasso or anything. We'd be stuck with one style of art, right? That's not very interesting. We want to be interesting. Okay. I'm gonna move this out of the way. All right. I'm going to use my Q-tip again to blend. Okay, I've blended it with the Q-tip, but I was having a difficult time, so I'm gonna go back with my light blue kind of add some of these lights that I lost. You, If you're using watercolor and you went too dark, sometimes if you take your brush and use plain water and just put it on the area you want to lift and then dab it out with a paper towel, sometimes that will lift an area. Just be very careful, don't scrub. Here we go. So I really need to come back into some of this with the white. I use a lot of white oil pastels in my paintings, my actual paintings, so I'm always missing them. I can, I can never find them. 
because I use them so much and I'm not very easy on my supplies either. I'm kind of a, an aggressive artist, so I need to be careful about that. Okay, so I've got this. I'll probably still go back and play with it some, but I'm gonna go ahead and move on to these mountains in the distance here. I'm gonna try to make these guys a lighter color of blue. Because I want them to look further away. If you've ever been to the mountains and you've seen in the distance, they look kind of gray and hazy. Kind of want it to feel like that. I'm going to go ahead and color this in pretty light, too. Okay, now I'm going to add a few darks in here just to give it some more interesting shapes. It's not quite how I was wanting it to work out, so I'm going to have to adjust. That's what we have to do. If something starts going wrong, we just adjust. Kind of like right now. <laughs> you know, we all just need to take care of each other. And it'll be fine. And I need to take care of these mountain shapes because they're looking a little rough. Okay. I'm going to do this blend a little more. Okay, I am going to color my sky a very light gray. Oh, it's like my favorite color too, gray. But I'm going to color my sky a really light gray. And then I'm going to go back and start to look at the trees. So I'm just going to do this gray kind of up top and on the sides. It's going to be darker up top. The sky is usually darker up here and then gets lighter as it goes down. So I'm going to use some gray and I'll probably use some of this white again. Now I want to make sure that I'm cleaning off the white in between uses. I don't want to drag the colors. It'll get stuck on here. So I'm just going to Okay, so I've got most of the sky blended. I'm going to add some darks to these trees, and then I'm going to go around and just kind of start touching up areas that I think need improvement. I don't think you could see it because I don't think the paper was lined up with the camera, and I apologize. But I went ahead and added some darks down here into the trees. This is a the dark the lightness or darkness of a color is called its value. So. This is my darkest value in the mountain. This is my lightest value in the mountain. This is the middle. I added a darker value and a lighter value to the trees. That's what gives the mountain its form. That's what makes it look a little 3D. If it were all flat and all the same color, it would just look flat. But that's why we add, because mountains catch shadow, trees catch shadow, trees catch sunlight. So that's why we have all these different colors of green. If you go outside and you look at the trees, a tree is not all the same color of green. Underneath is going to be a little darker because the sunlight is not hitting under the leaves. And the same thing goes with this. The light will hit different points. I'm so sorry my cat has joined us, but I'm going to try to get through this. Um, so I'm basically, I finished the main parts. I think I'm going to go in and add, like I want to smooth out all these rough spots so I'm going to just go in and kind of pick at my drawing and fix what I want to fix and I, you do the same on yours and I'll catch up with you in a second.
Okay, so I went back and smoothed out a few areas, and now I'm going to add a little bit of yellow on top of this green with my oil pastel, just to give it a little more value change, make it look like the light is hitting it a little more. So these warm colors, the reds, orange, and yellow, kind of pop forward before the cool colors back here, which are blues, greens, and purples. And something I'd like for you to think about, how do you think this would look different if we had put the cool colors all up first and put the warm colors in the back? What difference do you think it would make if we had done that? That's something to think about. These choices we make in art, oh no. <laughs> These choices we make in art are for a reason usually. But I think these warm colors pop forward a little more. Another thing is we know these trees aren't as probably as big as this compared to the mountains. But because they're closer to us, they're in the foreground, so they look a little bigger. All right. Okay, so I'm about to take the tape off. Gonna add a few things here and there. I'm about to take the tape off. So now we've learned a lesson about Georgia O'Keeffe, about values, which are the lightness or darkness of a color. We've learned about lines and form. We've learned about foreground, middle ground, and background. There we go. Take the tape off. I like to tape the edges of my drawing so that they look nice when they're complete. And when you take the tape off, if you're going to tape your drawings, pull away. You don't have to tape it. I like to tape it. Oops. But just pull away and slowly, not straight up. If you pull quickly, it'll rip. We don't want that. Okay. There we go. All right. Here's the finished piece. So I hope you were able to follow along. I know this was rocky because it's the first video lesson I've ever done, but I did want to be able to bring something to you while we're all stuck at home. Hopefully I will get better at doing these videos as we go along. And I... I hope that I'll have some equipment and enough materials to keep producing lessons that you can follow along with at home. Next week, I'm going to do another project based on Georgia O'Keeffe. It's going to be a collage slash mixed media project based on Ladder to the Moon. And I'm going to be using watercolors, glue, paper, and probably a white crayon so uh also maybe some magazines so i hope you'll join us